how often to do a power training circuit. Today we talk about how often should you do a power training circuit, the thought processes you need to go through to determine how often to do a power training circuit and some special considerations that not a lot of people think about when you answer the question how often to do a power training circuit. How often to do power training circuits? Well, that's a good question and the answer, as always, is it depends on your training goal. So you need to determine your desired outcome first, which is then your training goal, and from there you can then see how to plan the power training circuit and also determine the training frequency. Let's go through that step by step. So there are basically two options when it comes to a power training circuit. Um, you need to determine whether it should have a development character or a maintenance character. If you choose for the development character, the training frequency is a bit higher. If you choose for a maintenance character, the training frequency is lower and the emphasis of training shifts towards another physical quality. What does that mean? We've spoken about that before. So with the power training circuit, you basically have two options. You can develop the power development quality, two times develop, or you can develop the power endurance quality. Yeah, so diff slightly different qualities and you train for that slightly different. So coming back to development character or maintenance character, let's go through the development character first. So if you want to develop the power development quality, the work rest ratios are a bit higher, so more rest compared to the work which means a higher activation on the nervous system, which also means you need more time to recover from that. If this is the goal, we're talking about two to a maximum three power training circuits a week. If your goal is to develop the power endurance quality, the work rest ratios are a bit lower, so the emphasis changes. You do more work and get less rest, or you do the same work and get less rest. This kind of training places more demand on the metabolic system, so it's more exerting on the metabolic system, which also allows you to recover a bit quicker. Well, the first people will jump in now and say, hey, listen, if you do something metabolically that is very high with lactic acid accumulation and so on, it takes you a long time to recover from that. That is true. However, we're talking about a power training circuit. So power training, we discussed that in previous videos is determined by high intensities and relatively low durations. So you will not get into a lot of lactic acid accumulation in a power training circuit. That will be probably more a strength endurance circuit. Okay, back to the topic. So if you're working on your power endurance quality, it's more demanding metabolically than neurologically. The training frequency can be a bit higher. So we're talking about, let's say, three to four training sessions or a training session every other day. A word of advice here, and that is partly also my personal opinion, other people might do it different, depending on your goal in the power training circuit, so whether it's power development or power endurance development, power training circuits will probably not be the only sessions you do within that training week. So there will be some complementing sessions which could be, for example, a maximum strength session. So whenever we ask the question, how often should I do the power training circuit, we need to consider that the power training circuits are not exclusively the only sessions within that training week. I mean, obviously next to the sport specific sessions and so on, but also from the physical development side, there'll probably be another session that is geared towards developing or maintaining another physical quality. As I outlined, for example, that could be maximum strength. Okay, quick summary here. So if you're doing power training circuits with the intention to develop either the power development quality or the power endurance quality, the training frequency is a little bit higher, depending on what you're choosing for. Two to three training sessions, maximum four training sessions or every other day. The next question is how often should you do power training circuits if the power training circuits have more of a maintenance character? and the answer to that is another question. So uh, my first question would be, what is the physical quality 
that has a development character. Yeah? So assuming the power endurance or the power training circuits have a maintenance character, there will be something that has a development character. You need to determine what is that quality that has a development character. So that could be either maximum strength. It could also be aerobic conditioning. A couple of variations that could have a development character. It can also be that the main priority within this training cycle is probably competition or your sport specific training. So all that has somehow an influence on determining the training frequency for the power training circuits. So let's make it short and some general outlines. If the power training circuits have a maintenance character, you probably do one to two power training circuits a week, a minimum of one training sessions within 10 days. Less than that does not make a lot of sense in my opinion. A closing thought here, so if you are thinking about the training frequency for the power training circuits and you determine the training frequency for the power training circuits, it needs to fit within the overall picture, within the overall planning of your entire training, which includes other physical training sessions, but also sport specific training sessions. One consideration that I would outline here is also that everything you do somewhere has a trade-off. So when you want to determine the training frequency, you also need to ask yourself, how does that training, not only the power training or the power training circuits, that can be any other training, how does that training affect my other training? Or how does that training affect my competition when you're in season, for example? An example for that would be, I've worked in tennis for a long time and tennis, the competition, the frequency of the competition and the competitive, competitive schedule is literally the whole year round. So there's always that question, when can I train to develop something? When, need I, when do I need to back off with training in order to give myself the best chances to be fresh in competition? And this, in my opinion, is a good example to see where's the trade-off. Yeah? So if you train a little bit harder, you might get a little bit more out of it in terms of adaptation. But you also might, the exertion is higher and you might be a bit more fatigued, which has a trade-off in competition. And the other way around, if you want to have the best results in competition and you want to be fresh in competitions, you need to cut back on your training a little bit, which also means there might not be any adaptations. And if you do that for too long, which is a very common pitfall, if you do that for too long, prioritizing competitions without allowing time to develop, you will see de-adaptations and you will get worse physically. So bottom line here, you need to balance training and competition. To wrap it up, how often should you do power training circuits? First and foremost, determine your training goal. From that training goal, you see whether the power training circuits have a development character or a maintenance character. If it has a development character, the training frequency is a bit higher. Minimum of two sessions, maximum of four sessions, or maximum of a session every other day. If it has a maintenance character, then the training frequency is a little bit lower, which means two trainings a week, or a minimum of one training every 10 days.